shoot the shoot is definitely an episode. It's balls. It's balls. Now you can hear the new sound effect that I just put on my soundboard. You look disappointed. I look disappointed? I think that's just my face. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 228, dude. Uh, We're back, dude. I'm fucking back. We're so back. We're so back. It's crazy. We're so back. Call me a fucking chiropractor because we're back. We're back. Uh, uh, dude, I'm fucking back. Took a took a couple weeks off from uh, from work. Took a bit. Took a bit off. Um, went on a little. Um, went on a little honeymoon. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was literally in my honeymoon era. Okay, it's giving honeymoon. You know. That's what I said every day, and Jenna hated it. No, I didn't say it. Um, but no, we went on our honeymoon because we had we didn't really like have a honeymoon just for ourselves after the Italy, <clears throat> after our first wedding in Italy last year. Um, we had it really hard. We didn't really get to have a honeymoon after our destination wedding in Italy. <laughs> it's tough, man. Because um, no, like right after we got married over there, it was like. We went to the Amalfi Coast, but it was it wasn't just us. It was like, you know, Jacob, the you know Danny, Lord, like the the squad was there too. So it was like, um, it wasn't like you couldn't be as romantic as you wanted it to be, you know. So once we had the second wedding, that's when we got a chance to do the real honeymoon, just me and her, and it was great, man. It was super fucking sick. We went to uh, we went to Florence. Italy, again, because we love Italy. We love it so much. That's where we got married last year. It was just outside of Florence, so we went there. Dude, I said it last time. I'll say it again. Food over there is bullshit in, like, the best way possible, dude. Dude, just... I mean, I know it's different because, you know, when you're vacationing somewhere versus living somewhere, it's very different. But, like, dude... Honestly, though, like, honestly, if someone, well, I don't like, I don't think depression exists there. You know what I mean? I don't think you can have like a mental illness over there. I think it's like, it's impossible. And correct me if I'm wrong. Any Italians, if you're real, um, <clears throat> leave a comment and let me know if that is real, that is real or not. But every time I was there, I like the fucking sun was shining, dude. I was getting like. 15,000 steps a day. I was having like pizza, pasta, gelato, just like the fucking best shit ever. Like a bottle of wine every day. And I felt great. If I ate like that here, dude, I'd be fucking. I'd be literally a fucking Call of Duty zombie. I'd be like, yeah. It'd be a terrible fucking thing. It would suck. But over there, dude, you could do whatever you want, dude. You could have a chocolate cake for breakfast. A fuck like a a huge steak for lunch, and then like, I don't know. Like just like you could just like munch on a bone for dinner if you wanted to, and you'd be like, "This is great. This is all I needed." You know, it was the best, dude. Florence was amazing. We had a great time. Um, had like one of the best pizzas of my life, dude. Um, and then after uh, this is a little honeymoon recap, by the way. BT dubs, okay? I got to do a little personal life update, and then we'll get into the fucking shit, all right? Um, if you don't care about me, then you can skip to my friggin'... You can skip, all right? Um, so after Florence, we took a pretty... This was cool. This was really cool. We actually took a train from Florence to Paris. Um... And it wasn't just any normal train, okay? It was a fancy train, okay? Um, it was the Venice Simplon, uh, Venice Simplon Orient Express. And uh, it was fucking cool, man. It was, you know, it was definitely a splurge, but, you know, you only have, you only have one honeymoon. You only have, you only have one honeymoon, right? You have two weddings, but you have one honeymoon. You only get, yeah, that's what everyone does, I think, but... um. You get two weddings, one honeymoon, all right? That's it. It's like, that, it's like the video, two girls, one cup, but a lot nicer. 
um, two weddings, one <laughs> two, two weddings, one honeymoon. So it's like this fancy ass train. They like they like repurpose cars from like the like the twenties, dude. They're old as fuck, and the train is slow as shit. Like it's it compared to like the the Eurostar, like the bullet trains, dude. This was like a knife train. If bullet trains are fast and like it technology technologically advanced, this was a sword train, I think. Um. So uh, yeah, we got on there. There's like a dress code and shit, dude. Yeah, I had to wear a suit. I had to wear a suit on the train for dinner. It was crazy, dude. Um. So yeah. And if you're asking, yeah, did you wear this? Uh, did you wear the suit any other time during the vacation? No, I didn't. Oh, so you had to. Did you like rent a suit for it? No, I brought one from home. Oh, so you had to just carry around a suit bag with you the entire tour? Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, it's like a most of my luggage, but it's all good. And it was great, though. The, the train was beautiful. The scenery was amazing. Uh, I had a good sleep on there. It was. It was, it was very. Uh, it was very cozy. Um, and yeah, we woke up and then we got to Paris. We took a train from there to London. We stayed in London for a couple of days, did some shopping. Um, we went to Selfridges, which is like a big a department store. And then the day after, Harry Styles was there. Ah, I missed him. And that, and that hurt. That was me, dude. Um, he was like right where we were a day after. I was bummed. Uh, but then after London, we went to Amsterdam and it was, it was our first time there. It was our first time in Amsterdam. And, um, the only real, uh, thing I have knowledge about Amsterdam is, uh, weed and sex workers, like, um, you know, ladies of the night (laughs) As, as no one says anymore. Um, so I did, we didn't do either of those things. Uh, we didn't smoke. We I, actually the first day I got there, I, I woke up early. It was a pretty. It was like a sunny day. It was beautiful, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go get us some coffees. So I look up at my phone. Uh, there's a, a cafe that pops up. It's like a. It's like five minute walk. So I'm like, fucking, let's go. Um, and the thing on maps has a coffee cup on it. So I'm like, well, this is absolutely a cafe. Um, so I walk in. And dude, also the picture of it had, like, you know how like when you look on something on on maps, it has like a, like pictures from like reviews and shit. It had coffees on it, so I was like, "Fuck yeah, these look great." So I'm walking there, um, and I, I I see it in the distance, right? And I'm I'm starting to smell some weed, and I'm like, "It's Amsterdam, right? Everyone's fucking high all the time." So, uh, the the smell is getting stronger as I get closer to this coffee place, um, and then I walk in to this coffee place, and I shit you not, nobody is drinking coffee, there is no coffee machine anywhere, there is a chalk menu on the wall though, and it's saying all the different strains of weed that they have, and like the percentage of shit, and like how much THC or whatever is in stuff, um, and then I quickly realized I was not in a cafe. I was in a weed cafe where it's just weed. Um, and everyone was staring at me because they're high and paranoid. So when someone walks in clearly not high, looking around at everything confused, they're like, oh, get out of here. You're, you're not one of us. So I walked in, I figured out what it was, and then I, and then the, 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 the lady behind the counter is like, hello. And then I left. <laughs> I left. I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't want to be like, oh, no, so sorry. I thought this was a, I thought this was a cafe. I just want coffee. I'm like, yeah, we have a coffee-flavored nug up there, actually, dude. Um, it, does not, it does not wake you up, though. It does the opposite. And then the, the fucking other one I did, I went, so I looked up another coffee shop. I went there. And I walked by, and they had a mascot. Guess what the mascot was? A nug, a nugget of weed. That was the mascot, dude, a nugget of weed. And in the fucking coffee shop, in the cafe, there was a neon sign that said, highest in the room. So I said, great, that's another weed one. 
Um, so I had to walk 10 minutes to another uh, coffee shop. But it was good. So Amsterdam, thumbs up. Really cool. Lots of bikes. Uh, cool river, you know. I like Amsterdam. It was fun. Uh, weather was dog shit, but it was good. Um, but yeah, man. Our honeymoon was a lot of fun. Um, one thing I've noticed, I do want to talk about one story. It's 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 not really related to the honeymoon. We had the best time ever. Um, it, it was great. I love traveling uh, with Jenna. It's, it's the most fun thing ever. And I'm happy to be home. Glad it's over. You know, I mean, not that I mean, not, you know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm happy to be home. Not, I'm not glad that it's over. Um, I'm glad that we did it is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I'm tired. I woke up at 6 a.m. today. The jet lag, that's the other thing, man. The jet lag fucked me up. But no, I, I'm, it, it was like one of those conflicting things where it's like, you know, by the, by the end of it, it's like, God, I feel weird that like, I, I'm like, I want to leave, you know, but it's like, we were missing our dog, you know, we we're missing our house, we we're missing our bed, you know, it happens when you're traveling, you know, grass is always greener. Um, but one thing I've noticed, dude, um, especially when I'm traveling, but, um, my whole life, I don't think I've, I've like, I like, I'm trying to think, um, like I, I've never get compliments from like other boys, you know, it just never happened. Like, I mean, like boys don't really do that, you know, to begin with, right? Like if you see, if you walk by like a stranger, because I, I would never do it. If I walk by a stranger and I like liked his shirt, I wouldn't be like, yo, nice shirt, dude. But I would have to really like, I would have to fucking really like the shirt to say that, you know? Um, I just, I, I don't usually do that. I feel like boys don't do that. I feel like girls do that for sure all the time, right? Like Jen does that all the time. If like we're, uh, she sees someone like with a cool dress, she'll be like, cool dress. And I'm like, that's, I could never do that. Um, I could never compliment a stranger. Are you kidding me? Um, what if they kill me, you know? Um, so I will say though, ever since, I got this, ever since I got this mullet, dude, I get so many compliments from men. I get fucking cat called, dude. I get legitimately cat called from men. It happened in Amsterdam. It happened in London. It happened, in, it happened in every fucking city we were in, dude. Some The one in Amsterdam, guy was riding by on a bike when I was taking a picture of the river, and he was like, mullet looks fucking amazing, man. And he was like looking at behind his back while he was riding away on his bike. Dangerous. Happened in London. A dude at a, sh- at a fucking store said it. In Florence, a dude who was walking by said it. It's I, just, I get fucking cat called, man. And every time I'm like, dude, thank you. Yes, thank you. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't even... I don't even know what the, what the big deal is with catcalling, man. Why does everyone say it's bad? It made me feel really good. <laughs> okay, listen up, women. Okay, I have a different experience, so that's what that. Uh, so that's what is true for everyone. No, I think it's different because there's no, um, you know, it's a lot different. Yeah, you know, obviously it's a lot different than some guy being like, "Yo, dude, I love your mullet." To to me, than. A uh, guy like honking at a, a woman walking by, being like, "I want to have sex with you." Those are two opposite ends of the spectrum. I get it. I'm just making a joke, but um, I'm trying to think of like a funny way to because uh, I th- I think it'd be funny if I do respond the way that uh you know the usual like the regular way like the regular response to catcalling. That's how. That's how I should respond, you know? And some dude was like, yo, dude, I love, uh, yo, dude, I love your mullet. I just be like, yo, what the fuck, man? Back up. You're being fucking creepy, man. You're weirding me out, dude. I should do that. I should be super hostile towards him. <laughs> 
or complete the like the opposite way, you know? If they're like, yo, I love your mullet. It's like, yeah, you want to fucking, you want to pull, you want to pull on it, dude? What's the, what, you know, what that, what my mouth do, huh? What do our mouths do? Just being super sexual towards them. This is what you wanted, right? You like my mullet, you wanted the, you wanted the fuck? This episode of Very Really Good is sponsored by Opera. I don't know about you guys, but I'm on the computer all the time. I've been surfing the web for like 20 years now, and if you use the internet as much as me, you need a browser that can keep up. And that's why I use Opera One, the latest version of Opera Desktop Browser. Opera One features a completely redesigned look and brand new functionalities. And look, I know it's easy to just stick with your default web browser, but if you do that, you're missing out on some incredible features that you can only get with Opera One. For example, a free VPN and ad blocker built right into the browser. Browser, so you can browse safely and securely while avoiding annoying ads. And that's all completely free in the Opera browser. You can use the Opera player to play your favorite songs and podcasts like this one from a number of popular streaming services directly from your browser just with a few clicks. Opera also makes it incredibly easy to stay connected with the people in your life with their fully integrated messaging apps like Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, and more. But I think the coolest feature of Opera One is their integrated browser AI aria it's like having a genius friend that helps you out with whatever you need for example i always struggle with coming up with good titles for my videos so i'll just ask aria to give me like you know five you know sample titles to use for a video and they're usually really good jumping off points you know it gets me thinking in ways that i wouldn't be able to do on my own you know but that's just one tiny example of the millions of things that you can do with aria and if you're thinking opera seems like the perfect browser but i don't want to worry about switching all my stuff from my old browser to a new browser well listen up because with a few simple clicks you can transfer everything from your old browser directly to opera one it's so simple so if you want to improve your internet browsing experience in every possible way just click the link in the description and download opera one today for free all right thank you so much to opera for sponsoring this episode back to me um, but yeah, dude, honeymoon was amazing. It was perfect. Um, you know, happy to be home. Happy to be back with the dog, back to, to regular life, you know, no more walking 15,000 steps. I'm back here sitting on my ass, dude, the way God intended it. Right. I've been blabbing for fucking 16 minutes already. Oh, gee, willikers. Also, yeah. Okay. Never mind. I was going to say, so many fucking foreign exchange students in Florence, people, like, traveling, like, studying abroad from, like, dude, since when is that a real thing? Studying abroad, I always thought it was just, like, a make-believe thing. People were like, oh, yeah, I studied abroad in Germany for, no, you fucking, you're lying. How do you do that? How do you stop? If you're in if you're if you if you're majoring in like gender studies maybe you study abroad or or no if you're studying like w- women if you're majoring in like can you major in you can't major in women <laughs> i was seriously thinking that is a major you could get at a university i might think studying abroad like a woman studying I guess if you're studying to become a guy, well, that's that's not. All right, never mind. I tried. I tried. I was gonna say if you're studying to become a gynecologist, then you could then you'd be studying abroad. But like, you know, some dudes got that s- stuff, you know. So who fucking knows, man? I'm trying. I tried to make the joke, and and I and I and it kind of worked. Okay, but um, yeah, everyone I got I got recognized. Every time I I got recognized in Florence, um, it was like maybe it happened what maybe like twenty times. Who knows? Out of if it maybe if out of those, it was maybe two Italian people. The rest of them were like from fucking Virginia. They're like, yeah, I'm here studying math. You're like, what? How? Also, why math here? It's the same. <laughs> Study math at home. Yeah, what's a ta- what would be Italian math? It'd be like, it'd be everything but with like, it, it'd all be about pizza or something, you know? The Pythagorean theorem, like the pizza pie. Um, oh, 
Also, dude, another thing. This may be the, the this might be this is a very Canadian experience, but. And, like, coffee around the world is amazing. Tim Horton's coffee is fucking dog shit. But every time I'm, like, I could be anywhere in the world, even when I was in Australia, Italy, fucking Amsterdam, in my head I'm, like, what I would fucking give for a double-double from Tim Horton's right now, dude? I miss it so much. And I come home and I have it. I'm, like, here it is. Still tastes awful. And I love it. Uh, okay, let's get in some. That's like half the fucking episode already, dude. Sorry. I I could talk about my fucking honeymoon this whole time, but I gotta get those fucking clicks, bro. I gotta get the clicks, bro. I need some fucking title shit. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about, man. Um, also, I have like fucking six topics here. I don't think we're gonna get to all of them. So, if you want to hear the rest of the stuff we don't get to, uh, check out the fucking Patreon, man. Patreon.com slash very, really good. Uh, get in on it, you know. Check it out. Support the pod if you want. Um, it's pretty cool over there. It's super chill, you know, more laid back, right? Um, it's a good time. So, yeah, N- no pressure, but, you know, do what you want. Um, okay. I'm trying to think what we should talk about first. Um, okay, let's talk about Jimmy Carr. All right. So, Jimmy Carr is a he's a comedian, and all right, fuck. I'm rusty, dude. I haven't, had, I haven't done a podcast in fucking weeks. Okay. So Jimmy Carr is a, you know, he's a, he's a comedian. You know, he's one of those comics who's like, oh, there's no, he's British. So he's like, there's, I can say whenever I want. I'm joking. It's only a joke. I can say whenever I want. Your mum, she's a bitch. And, and everyone in the audience is like, he, you can say that? And he's like, yeah. Sorry, Libs. I feel like there was like a good two years where Jimmy Carr was like actually kind of funny. Um, but again, he's like fallen into that pipeline of like older comedians being like, you can't fucking say anything anymore, man. Or they'll fucking cancel you. I'm canceled, man. Dave Chappelle is canceled too. I know he just did seven fucking sold out shows at Madison Square Garden, but he's canceled, man. He can't fucking do it. It's annoying. It's fucking po- it's fucking played out. It's lazy. It's hack. It's stupid. Um but Jimmy Carr I guess he's got like a Netflix shit coming out or it's already out, but he tweeted um a video, and he captioned it, I put my American audience to the test with the selection of my darkest jokes. And, um, let's just, let's just listen to these, these, to these dark jokes. You here this evening, I'll tell you why it's great to be here. We're drinking, my friends, in the Last Chance Saloon. What I'm saying on stage tonight is barely acceptable now. (laughs) In ten years' time, fucking forget about it. Okay, so remember that. What did he say? What did he says, what I'm saying on stage tonight is barely acceptable now. Fucking forget about it. Remember that. You're going to be able to tell your grandchildren about seeing this show. Yeah. You will say, I saw a man and he stood on stage and he made light of serious situations. We used to call them jokes. And people would laugh. And your grandchildren will ask, they'll say, Non-binary elder. (laughs) Non-binary elder. What's a joke? And you'll say, you are. Okay, dude. 
it's so like it is so like racist uncle core, you know? Like your fucking idiot uncle at Christmas will bring this video up. He's like, you, "Did you hear? Hear what Jimmy Carr said? I like his. I like him. His last name is Carr. I have one of those. <laughs> That's how I got here." Dude, an applause break, you know? I say you could joke about anything, but not with anyone. I think with you good people this evening, I should be fine, right? Oh, let's go, Jimmy. Well, let's see, shall we? We'll put that to the test. Okay, so here he comes. His darkest jokes. You ready? Having sex is like riding a bike. My uncle taught me when I was a kid. All right. People say the best things in life are free, but those people have clearly never had sex. <laughs> okay, dude, yeah, like these are... <sighs> it's also like... You could just post these on like... Above a Minion... And and it would get so much fucking love on Facebook, dude. If you if this these words are over top a picture of a minion, dude, you're going viral, bro. I like it when the girl puts the condom on for you, but I was asked to leave the pharmacy. Dude, I also hate his reactions after his jokes, too, being like, oh, did I just say that? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, cops, take me to jail. Throw away the key. I'm fucking crazy. I say whatever. <laughs> My girlfriend doesn't think that her sister is trustworthy, but believe me, that girl can keep a secret. <laughs> Dude, he's so dark and twisted, man. He's like the fucking Joker, bro. He's literally like the Joker. I can't believe it. <laughs> Is anyone here in a controlling relationship? Raise your partner's hand. <laughs> I want One Direction to do a BTS covers medley at my funeral because that way I'll be glad I'm dead. Now, you might think this is silly, but... I Yo. Why? Okay, hold this on. This is silly, but I assure you, it's absolutely true. When Zayn left One Direction, for me, it was like 9-11. Yeah, I didn't care about that either. Okay. What? What? When did this come out? <laughs> Why is he making... I mean, BTS is like relatively new, right? Why is... <laughs> what the fuck? Are you guys ready for my most fucked up jokes? You guys are going to kill yourselves when you hear this shit. I didn't care when Zayn left 1D. Mm. I say what the... I, I say whatever the fuck I want, man. Well, there's a real generational divide there. I could see... Some people are looking at me like 9-11. Also, why was the fucking... Did you guys hear that laugh? I was like the beginning of the... Feel Good Inc. by Gorillaz. Listen. Well, there's a real generational divide there. I could see. <laughs> Some people are looking at me like 9-11, steady on. And other people are looking at me like One Direction, don't take their name in vain. <laughs> I was actually supposed to be on one of the planes on 9-11. But the more interesting story is how I met Osama.
Dude, it's just so... It's just so annoying when, like, comedians like that, they'll they'll have, like, an, an edgy or... An edgy joke, right? And then they'll say it. And it's... And it's not funny. Because there is... I think there is a way to joke, to write a joke about anything. I think there is a way to do it. You just have to be smart and funny, you know? Um, which is, like, why comedy can is so difficult, right? Um, oh, my fucking camera stopped recording. <clears throat> but it's just so annoying when these, like, these comedians will be like, yeah, these, oh, God, they'll make, like, an edgy joke being, like, so so fucking you ever just shit on a dog or something and then and then no one laughs and they're like oh god okay you fucking snowflakes you guys can't you guys don't laugh at anything i'm gonna keep going anyway and it's like no they're it's not laughing because they're fucking like offended or anything it's they're not laughing because it's not funny you know it's like there's because there's people like fucking like Anthony Jeselnik is probably the the best uh, example of someone who makes like like edgy jokes, you know, pretty pretty out there, pretty offensive jokes and stuff. But it's like he's like a really good writer, and he can like write he can write a joke, you know. So it's like, and he's not going up there being like he can't fucking say anything anymore because it's fucking stupid, man. It's not true. You can you could fucking say whatever you want. You just got to be funny, you know. And like you know, and not and you know and well to a t- to an extent, obviously, I can't go up there and say the n word. You know, that's <laughs> that'd be pretty fucking insane. But you know what I mean, right? Um. I just don't, I just, I, I just don't, I just don't get it, man. Um, okay, the next thing, okay, should we change it? Let's change the subject. I'm done talking about Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay, what are we at? 32? God damn, dude, Okay. All right, we've got a little, okay, this is a little, the story's a little old, okay, but I was, I was on my honeymoon, okay, and I couldn't talk about it, okay, so I'm going to talk about it now, um, so, <laughs> dude, this is such a gross story, um, but I had to talk about it, this is like perfect VRG content, okay, um, so the headline here is, Delta flight forced into emergency landing by passenger's diarrhea. And then in quotations, this is a biohazard. Okay. And it says, it was a crappy situation. A Delta flight from Atlanta to Barcelona was forced to turn around and make an emergency landing after a passenger had diarrhea all the way through the plane. (laughs) Yo. Ew, dude. The Airbus A350 aircraft was two hours into a transatlantic flight from Georgia to Spain on Friday when the pilot asked to come back because of the fecal fiasco. This is a biohazard issue, the pilot said to air traffic control. Yo, that's crazy. To shit so much that you turn a plane around? That's crazy. Damn. If only they knew that on 9-11, you know? They could have turned that fucking thing around. Just crap a bunch, right? Yeah, to shit so... And it's like... I'm trying to... Because th- I've seen pictures and videos of it. I'm not going to sh- show it on here. Are there pictures? I'm going to look. Sabrina, I'm really sorry if you see it, but you have to like blur it out or something, but (laughs) 
Ew. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you could blur that out, Sabrina. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Good to see it. Dude, it's like in the, I'll explain it for people. It's like in the aisle. It's like brown stuff. Just up, up and down the whole aisle, dude. Ew. Ew, dude. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, to crap so much. That the plane is like, nah, we got to land this shit right now, dude. There's shit all over, dude. And, okay. Planes are already, like, so gross. You're in, like, a huge fucking soda can. For for fucking hours with the same people breathing the same air. Farting, burping, coughing, picking your nose, fucking taking your shoes off and shit. It's it's gross. Planes are fucking gross, okay? But I can't, I feel so bad for those people. I can't imagine what it was like being like, I don't know, watching fucking Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse and you see a guy run down the aisle just like, (laughs) oh my God, so sorry. Oh my God. No, oh my God, I freaking farted. Dude. Also, I've never had... I've Listen, I've had my fair share of, you know, of, of diarrhea, okay? I, I've, been, I, I've been on this earth for a while. I've had my fair share of diarrhea, okay? And I also eat like a fucking idiot, so it happens to me I, I probably... Not frequently, but, you know, I've, I've been around the block. Um, I've always made it to a bathroom, no matter how bad it got. I've always made it. I've always made it to a toilet. Um, I can remember three times where I was like, I might fucking diarrhea in my pants right now, but I held it in because that's what you do. I can't imagine how bad of a case of diarrhea this must have been if he couldn't even make it to the bathroom. If he was just shitting profusely up and down the aisle, dude. I mean, this is like a life hack, though. If you, like, if you get on the plane and you're, like, if you change your mind, you're, like, fuck, I don't want to go to, I don't want to go there anymore. Or it's, like, I forgot my, uh, I don't know, I forgot my favorite hat at home. I got to turn this plane around. You can't really do that, right? But here's how you do it. You know, you, you ask the stewardess for, like, fucking six cups of coffee, you know? Pound them back. There you go. Okay, the article says the identity of the passenger remains a mystery. Still? Wait, how did... They still don't know who did it? How do they not know? There's a guy with like shit covered jeans and he's like Yeah, there's a guy there's a guy sitting in someone can someone please just like fess up, admit to this, we're not gonna be mad at you. We just need to know who did this. And everyone's like, No, it wasn't me. And there's a guy with like sh- sh- shit all over his jeans and legs, and he's like, Yeah, who d- fess up? Who did it? Come on. Everyone beside him is like <laughs> nose in their shirt, gagging. Dude, it was Dude, it was you. You fucking stink like shit, man. Dude, it's not me. This is chocolate. They gave me chocolate. I got a chocolate bar. Shut up. <laughs> okay, yeah, they so they still don't know who shit. That's crazy. I'd be tracking that person down. Uh, but the passengers and crew were transferred and flight DL-194 finally made it to Barcelona. Or like Barcelona, because I'd be barfing on the way there if someone shit up and down the aisle. Dude, that's so crazy. Look at the flight path. It kind of looks like a turd. 
<laughs> Yo, no way, dude. It literally looks like a turd. <laughs> what are the odds, dude? I mean, diarrhea doesn't really have a shape. You know, it, it takes the shape of whatever container it's in because it's a liquid. Uh, okay, cleaning crews were able to scrub down the aircraft once it landed in Atlanta since flight records show it was used for another flight. Oh, no. They used it again, dude? Okay. No more flying with Delta, because it might be the poop. You might get the poop plane. They should, like... Actually, you know what? They should, like... Paint it... Like, paint the plane brown. The, like, the poop plane? This 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 aircraft that the poop happened, they should... It, I mean, if they're going to keep using the plane, right, they should really fucking double down, you know? Double as in two, number two. Double down, paint the plane brown. I don't care, I paint the plane brown. You know that Doja Cat song? Paint the plane brown. Charge a fucking premium. You can sell, instead of first class, you can call it, Fart ass. <laughs> Premium economy? How about... That can, that can also be premium economy. But then a con, uh, coach or economy, it could be... Col, it col, colon, colonoscopy. Double the prices... And then you could have like, um, you know, you could have all the the stewardess. They're dressed like poops. They're dressed like turds, you know. And um, yeah, I th- I think Delta. That's a great idea. Delta, take it. That's okay. I won't be upset if you steal my idea. Okay, it's free. All right. Uh, our teams worked as quickly and safely as possible to thoroughly clean the airplane and get our customers to their final destination. We sincerely apologize to our customers for the delay and inconvenience of their travel plans. Wow. That'd be a crazy final destination movie. If someone has a, you know, the, the first final destination when he has a vision of the plane is going to crash. Instead of that, he has a vision that a guy is going to have crazy diarrhea. <laughs> and he's like, get me out the plane. Get me off! And like, whoa! All his friends are like, dude, what are you doing? We're going to fucking Spain, dude. We're having the best on. He's like, no, get me the fuck off the plane. Someone's gonna shit. Someone's gonna diarrhea. He's like, all right, get him off, get him off. And then they watch the plane take off, and they like hear the farts from the fuck from down there. They're like, how'd you know? And then the rest of the movie is like diarrhea trying to catch up with them and like claim them, you know. That'd be a fucking good movie. Final Destination, but shit. Battle Destination. I don't know. Final. Um, final Desecration, maybe? What does it mean to desecrate? Oh, yeah. Treat with violent disrespect. I think that's what diarrhea does. I think that's what your ass does when you have diarrhea. Okay? Um, fuck, what are we at, dude? 43 minutes already? The hell? What the hell? Time flies, dude. Okay, god damn it. Uh, fuck, well... That was episode 228. I'm gonna wrap it up because I have another um, episode to do. Right after this, so if you want to keep this fucking party going, we still have tons of things to talk about. Uh, we're talking about Ben Shapiro using one of my clips in his videos. Uh, we're going to talk about this crazy golf rage guy. We might talk about we might talk about Quabble Cop, dude. We got a bunch of shit to talk about. So uh, check out the Patreon, very really good. Uh, Patreon.com slash very really good. Sorry, thank you so much, and um, thanks for the support. Happy to be back. 
Um, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. Love you, mate. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>